Hi, I'm Dr. Joelle Lamalt, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of British Columbia. Today I'm going to be talking about a manuscript that I completed in collaboration with Nuta Yorman, Katerina Kurchonsky, and Ian Gottlieb while I was a postdoctoral fellow at Stanford University. Our work examines the effectiveness of attentional bias training for adolescents who are at risk for depression. People with depression and those who are at risk for depression display negative attentional biases. Or in other words, they attend towards negative stimuli and away from positive stimuli. And importantly, this tendency to display these negative attentional biases contributes to the onset and maintenance of depressive symptoms, making them an important target for change. Research has shown that these negative attentional biases can actually be modified and improved using attentional bias training, or ABT. In the majority of ABT studies, researchers use a modified version of the computerized dot probe task to train more positive or less negative attentional biases. In the typical dot probe task, participants view pairs of facial expressions presented side by side on the computer screen. One of the facial expressions is neutral, whereas the other is an emotional expression. Immediately after the offset of these picture pairs, a dot appears in the location previously occupied by one of the pictures, and participants are asked to indicate whether the dot appears to the right or the left side of the screen. In the typical dot probe task, the dot appears with equal probability behind the neutral and the emotional face. In the modified dot probe task that's used in ABT studies, however, the dot appears with higher probability, typically between 80 and 100%, behind the emotional face when the emotional face is positive or behind the neutral face when the emotional face is negative. With practice, participants inadvertently learn these contingencies and are thus most likely to attend towards positive stimuli and away from negative stimuli even after the contingencies have been removed. ABT has been shown to benefit adults and youth with depression. The researchers had actually not yet examined whether ABT could be used to alter attentional biases in youth who were at risk for developing depression. With this in mind, we recruited girls who were at risk for depression based on their mother's history of the disorder, and we randomly assigned them to receive six sessions of real ABT or six sessions of sham ABT. Girls who received real ABT completed a version of the dot probe task in which the dot appeared behind the positive face on 100% of the positive trials and behind the neutral face on 100% of the negative trials. In contrast, girls who received sham ABT completed just the standard version of the dot probe task. And we assessed participants' attentional biases at pre and post training sessions. In addition, we wanted to explore the mechanisms that underlie the benefits of ABT. And so we also assessed participants' mood and their physiological reactivity to a brief laboratory stressor at the pre- and post-training sessions. Importantly, we found that positive attentional biases can in fact be trained in adolescents who are at risk for depression. Specifically, it was only girls who received real ABT who exhibited decreased attention towards sad faces and increased attention towards happy faces from pre to post training. We also found that the ABT condition affected mood and physiological reactivity to stress. Whereas the youth who received sham ABT experienced a pre to post training increase in negative mood and a pre to post training increase in heart rate in anticipation of that stressor, it was youth who received real ABT who were buffered against these negative outcomes. So overall, this is the first study to directly manipulate a risk factor that may underlie the onset of depression, and thus it increases our understanding of mechanisms that are involved in that process. Our findings also represent the first experimental evidence that manipulating attentional biases might protect against the maladaptive physiological reactivity to stress and exacerbation of negative mood that would otherwise be experienced by adolescents who are at risk for depression. With this in mind, we hope that our work will contribute to the understanding of risk for major depressive disorder.